Greetings, you fellow sci-fi lovers. Today we will delve into a nuanced exploration of the intersection between sci-fi narratives and the portrayal of Asia. Unexpected, I know, but I attended a few classes this semester and I hope this video will let you as speechless as I was when I first realized how common these depictions are. Let's take Star Wars as an example. When my teacher asked if we could find any Asian representations in the movie, we all shook our head. Was it because we had no clue it was inspired by Asia, or maybe because we were at a loss of words due to this stressful pop quiz? No one will ever know. Well, I hear you rolling your eyes behind your screen because I have an excellent hearing, saying If not just, Judge Lucas was a big fan of Japan, plus he's a Buddhist. Okay, Mr. know it all. Did you know that the term Jedi comes from the Japanese term Jedi Geki, a term used to designate the period dramas with samurais? Or perhaps have you noticed that most of the names sound Asian? Yoda, Anakin, Obi-Wan Kenobi, that may be the most obvious one. But we had no clue. We're all in our sci-fi bubble, vibing with the Force, and turns out the names are sneakily tied to Asia. It's like finding out your favorite space adventure as a secret connection to our everyday life. Mind-blowing, isn't it? Yeah, but why is it a big deal? Well, it hints at something deeper. When we scratch the surface, it reveals how we've kind of accepted that e Asia equals the unknown, the exotic, the strange. Those names felt alien, not because they were from a galaxy far, far away, but because they were secretly rooted in our perceptions of Asia as this mysterious land. It's a wake-up call, making us question why we find certain things strange or foreign. Unraveling these hidden ties challenges us to rethink how we view Asia, not just in sci-fi, but in the real world too. So the next time you hear a Star Wars name, remember it might just be a subtle reminder of the larger narratives we've embraced about Asia. So rather than a cosmic joyride, we'll be navigating the often overlooked shadows cast by these depictions, pondering how they contribute to a less than accurate understanding of Eastern cultures. Join me in a contemplative journey through Beyond the Horizon, sci-fi's impact on Asian perceptions. Let's uncover the less sunny side of the sci-fi spectrum and navigate sci-fi Asian stereotype galaxy together. First of all, let's jump into our personal views of Asia. There's a big chance that we all share the same. How do you picture an old Asian man? A bob along with a really long moustache, wrinkly and short? Okay, but it goes far beyond that. The portrayal of older Asian men in sci-fi is quite restricted. Movies and novels often depict them as submissive and humble, and more often than not, they end up embodying the stereotype of martial arts masters, or senseis if you prefer. And what about women? With their big red lips, their porcelain faces and their sophisticated hair, they frequently embody the image of either icy women which explains why there's a prevalence of female robots with Asian features as seen in works like Ghost in the Shell, Cloud Atlas or Alita, or women of pleasure, mirroring the traditional geisha-inspired archetype. You know, when we think about Asia, it's like a mental checklist. Geisha, technology and spirituality, they all come to mind almost instantly. But these characters aren't even Asian. Yes, and that's why it's tricky. I mean, why do we keep seeing Scarlett Johansson as the face of Ghost in the Shell, Ewan McGregor rocking Obi-Wan Kenobi vibes, or Anna de Armas playing Joy in Blade Runner? It's a classic case of Hollywood whitewashing, where they pick non-Asian actors for roles that should, by all means, be played by someone of Asian descent. But why is that? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Hollywood has this historical tendency to think that casting big name stars, even if they're not the right fit for the role, will bring in more cash at the box office. But these choices also reflect a far more concerning problem that goes beyond the simple will of earning money with big names of the movies industries. Alright, let me break it down for you. Back in the day, some Westerners got really intrigued by the East, you know, Asia, the Middle East and all. But instead of truly understanding these places, they sort of created this fantasy version in their heads. They put on these cultural goggles that tinted everything with stereotypes and misconceptions. 
And so you end up with paintings, writings and all sorts of things showing the East as this dreamy, enchanting world. The catch? It was all based on these Western ideas, not the real East. It's like trying to judge a book by just looking at the cover. Plus, they started creating this stark contrast in which the East gets this tag of being also massive and spiritual. On the flip side, the West is portrayed as the down-to-earth and dominant powerhouse, grounded and practical. Now think about this mindset affecting how people in the West see and deal with the East. Suddenly, everyone from the East is mysterious, exotic and kind of one-dimensional. The rich diversity and complexities of these cultures? Not really seen. And guess what? There's a term for this. Orientalism. Let's give credit where credit is due. It's not theory of mind, but Edward Said's one of the founders of postcolonial studies. So next time you see a sci-fi movie in which you see all these cliches, keep in mind that we, Westerners, are the ones behind these representations of Asia as another dimension, so far away from our civilization. Thanks for watching and leave a like please.